Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you guys today will now be the third video that I've made on the University of Idaho killings. I made the first two videos to keep you all updated on how this case is moving forward and now it seems that we finally have the answers that we've been looking for. So of course, I wanted to keep you guys all updated on this very important update. But I also do want to mention that just like the first two videos that I made, I'm only going to be including information that I can confirm. I know there is a lot of talk on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit and other sites, but any information that I could not confirm, I will not include in this video. I want to make this video only based on the facts that we know about this case. And of course, the more that comes out, I will keep you all updated. But if there is information that you guys know about that you've seen discussed somewhere or that you've seen someone make in a Facebook post or something like that and it's not included here, that is because I just couldn't find it in a reputable source. So just keep that in mind as we go throughout this video. As a very short reminder, this case involves the death of four students attending the University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho. The four students involved in this attack are 21-year-old Kaylee Gonsalves, 21-year-old Madison Mogan, 20-year-old Ethan Chapin, and 20-year-old Zana Kernodal. To learn more about what each student was like, who they were, and more information about them as individuals, make sure to go ahead and check out the first video that I made on this case. For the most comprehensive coverage of everything that has happened this far, make sure you watch the other two videos on this case as well as this one. But as a basic summary to remind everybody about the details of this case, the three girls all lived together, so Kaylee, Maddie, and Zana. They also had two other roommates who were not harmed during the attack, while Ethan, he was dating Zana and had been visiting visiting her that night and he was sleeping over. The four students each had their nights out with Zana and Ethan going to a frat party and Maddie and Kaylee going out to bars and then each of the students got home just before 2 a.m. I do also want to mention that the two roommates who were not harmed during this, they had been out of town and they returned back home just before the four victims had gotten home. Each student had been stabbed to death multiple times and it was thought to have had happened while they were asleep and it was an absolutely brutal and bloody scene. I go more into the setup of the house in part two, but just as a reminder, it was said that there is a sliding glass door in the back of the house, which brought you directly to the second floor. So if you went in through the front, you would have to walk upstairs to get to the second floor. But if you went in through the back sliding glass door, then you'd be directly on the second floor. Zana and Ethan were on the second floor sleeping in a bed together while Maddie and Kaylee were on the third floor and they were thought to have both been sleeping in the same bed as well. So it's thought that this person entered in through the sliding glass door since the two roommates on the first floor were not harmed. So this all took place with them being stabbed on November 13th. Then the next morning, police received a call regarding somebody who was passed out. There were a lot of questions around this in the initial stages. People thought that it was really strange that because of how bloody the scene was, how was it reported that the roommates only reported that somebody had been passed out and wasn't waking up because that's what was originally reported. But this was actually cleared up recently. It was stated that these roommates did see this horrific and bloody scene when they woke up at around 11 a.m. that day. And so they ran outside to call a few other friends, I believe, to come over to help them. But by the time they got there, the roommates were passed out because of how overwhelmed they were when they saw that their roommates had been murdered. So the person who called was not the roommates. It was a friend using the roommate's phone. And they were reporting that these roommates had passed out because of how they found this horrible scene. So that's pretty much how the 911 call happened. And it totally Totally makes sense that this is why it was reported in the way that it was. So that is a quick summary of what has happened so far. They were murdered in the early morning hours of November 13th and for the following six weeks, police didn't release a ton of information and for a while, the families and the public were starting to get very, very frustrated. 
but police wanted to assure the community that they were doing everything in their power to bring the person responsible to justice. They said that they combed through over 19,000 tips and interviewed over 300 people during the course of their investigation. But now we have a possible answer as to who committed this atrocious crime that left the entire community shaken. As of December 30th of 2022, Moscow police have arrested a suspect who they believe was responsible for the quadruple murder. This man is 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger. Brian Kohlberger is a graduate student at Washington State University. He lived in his own apartment in Pullman, Washington, which is located about nine miles or a 15-minute drive away from Moscow, Idaho, literally right across the border. Articles reported that Brian had just finished his first semester of his doctoral degree at WSU's Criminal Justice and Criminology Department, he also worked as a TA for the program. Before starting his PhD, he attended Northampton Community College in Pennsylvania, graduating in 2018 with his associate's degree in psychology. Then he got his bachelor's degree from DeSales University in Pennsylvania, which is a Catholic college in 2020. Then he completed his master's degree in June of 2022. After that, he moved to Washington and started his PhD program just months before the murders. I will tell you more about him and the information surrounding this connection in just a couple of minutes. We don't have all of the information yet about the police's probable cause or their arrest affidavit yet. We do have a couple little bits of information as to what connected them to Brian, which I will discuss in just a minute. But once we have more information available, I will be making another video to keep you guys all informed. But either way, we do know right now that his DNA was found at the home where the four students were murdered. Obviously, he does not go to the University of Idaho, so his DNA being there is kind of significant, but we don't know much more beyond that. We also know that police spent 12 hours searching through his apartment and processing evidence. Reporters saw investigators removing multiple bags, boxes, and a computer from their home while they were searching. I also stated in my last video that police were requesting help from the public in locating a white Hyundai Elantra that was seen in the area around the time of the killings. Police have said that they combed through about 22,000 cars with similar descriptions throughout the course of this investigation. We found out that Brian does drive a white Elantra and they were able to track him down using this as well. As of right now, police have not been able to find the murder weapon yet. They also have not stated whether he knew the four students or not, or how he came upon them to wanting to murder them. Police have said that this is a very complicated, extensive case, and over time, they were able to develop a very clear picture of what happened but they said that their work is not even close to being finished. Now, the police said that for the previous few days before his arrest, the FBI had been following Brian and tracking his movements to get the probable cause in order to arrest him. A few weeks before Christmas, police saw that he headed back home to Pennsylvania, where his parents still live. He was finally arrested on December 30th, six weeks after the murders, at his parents' home in Chestnut Hill Township, Pennsylvania. We also know that per reports from News Nation's Brian Enton, that the house he was arrested from, so his parents' house, had a broken window near the door after authorities had left. Now, he is being held in prison with four charges of first-degree murder and felony burglary, and he was denied bail. Police have stated that they believe that he entered the home with the intent to kill these students. It also seemed that according to their press conference, they have ruled out a second suspect being involved and they believe that this person acted alone. Police Chief James Fry said, quote, we have an individual in custody who committed these horrible crimes and I do believe that our community is safe, but we need to be vigilant. Thank you for coming today. Last night, in conjunction with the Pennsylvania State Police, Federal Bureau of Investigation, detectives arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Kohlberger 
in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, on a warrant for murder of Ethan, Zena, Madison, and Kaylee. I wanna personally thank these agencies for their assistance in this case. Koberger resides in Pullman, Washington, and is a graduate student at Washington State University. We will provide as much information as we can about the extradition to Idaho and the criminal process. However, due to Idaho state law, we are limited in what information we can release today until Kohlberger has, been, has his initial appearance in Idaho court. I want to express my appreciation to our local community, the people of Idaho and those throughout our nation who provided information to help us investigate these murders has been very impressive. We've received over 19,000 tips and we've conducted over 300 interviews. These murders have shaken our community and no arrest will ever bring back these young students. However, we do believe justice will be found through the criminal process. This was a very complex and extensive case. We had developed a clear picture over time and we stand assured that the work was not, the, the work is not done, but be assured the work is not done. This has just started. Since November, we have remained laser focused on pursuing, pursuing every lead in our pursuit of justice for the victims and their families. As of right now, he is still in Pennsylvania and all of the records regarding his motives and the details leading to his arrest have been sealed. It was stated that per Idaho law, once he is extradited back to Idaho and is officially served his arrest warrant, that is when we will find out more information about the case. His hearing for extradition will be taking place on January 30th, so I wonder if that's when we're going to find out if he's going to be extradited the same day or what's going to happen, but of course, I will keep you all updated on that. They also said that Brian was on suicide watch in jail. At one point, Brian had asked one of the officers if anybody else had been arrested, to which I believe they did not give him an answer. They said that he just had this quiet blank stare throughout the entire process. Now, even though we don't know everything about Brian Kohlberger and the murders and how he was investigated, there have been things that have come out about him that relates to his research as a criminal justice student. Now, there was a post made by someone named Brian Kohlberger who posted under the Prison and Ex-Cons subreddit about seven months ago. In this post, he inquired about users participating in his research study so that he could understand, quote, how emotions and psychological traits influence decision-making when committing a crime. In a post, he wrote, quote, my name is Brian. I am inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and pathological traits influence decision-making when committing a crime. In particular, this study seeks to understand the story behind your most recent criminal offense with an emphasis on your thoughts and feelings throughout your experience. In the event that your most recent offense was not one that led to a conviction, you may still participate. Additional surveys are included after the open-ended section as to best understand your unique traits. He goes on to say that all answers provided will be anonymous and that this study has been approved by DeSales University Institutional Review Board, or IRB. This survey, I believe, was also posted on the university's website, and I believe it was stated that Brian was working with with two professors on this study. Some of the questions included in this study are, how did you choose that victim or target over others? What was the first move you made in order to accomplish your goal? And before leaving, is there anything else that you did? Since then, this post, the survey overall, has been removed from both Reddit and the university's website. A fellow student who knew Brian and had several classes with him at WSU said that Brian seemed very confident and outgoing, 
but he was always searching for a way to fit in. He said that Brian always wanted to appear academic and that he had to make sure that everybody around him knew that he knew something. In terms of criminal record for Brian Kohlberger, all we know as of right now is that he received a minor traffic violation in August in Latah County, which is the county that Moscow is located in. He paid the fine for this violation in September, but there is no known connection between this and the murders, of course. Cleaning crews were also scheduled to clean up the Moscow house just this past Friday, December 30th, but this clean was abruptly halted after Brian's arrest. Police Chief James Fry said at the news conference that the house cleanup has been halted and that this came from a legal request from the court. That same day, Brian Enton, once again of News Nation, also reported that investigators are taking more items out of the Moscow house right now, but they have a tarp out to block the public and the news from seeing the items that they take out of the house. Now, even though we don't have all of the information about Brian Kohlberger or what led to his arrest, the reason I wanted to make this video right away after finding out about Brian's arrest is because police have said that they're still looking for the public's help with providing any information that they can about Brian. So they have said that if you do have any information that could be helpful to law enforcement, especially regarding Brian Kohlberger, you can contact their tip line at 208-883-7180. You can email tipline at ci.moscow.id.us or go online to fbi.gov slash Moscow, Idaho. As for the four families of these four young students, obviously this whole situation has been traumatizing, frustrating, and heartbreaking but they are relieved that somebody is finally in custody and will hopefully close this chapter of their lives. Stacy Chapin, Ethan Chapin's mother, wrote in a Facebook post, quote, We are relieved this chapter is over because it provides a form of closure. However, it doesn't alter the outcome or alleviate the pain. We miss Ethan and our family is forever changed. Over the last seven weeks, we stood by the Moscow Police Department, FBI, and the Idaho State Police, confident that they would solve this crime. So, when we received the phone call last night, we congratulated them on their diligent work and service. We remain grateful to the University of Idaho and the Sigma Chi fraternity for their ongoing support. We also appreciate the outpouring of kind words from so many others, which we'll need as we enter this next chapter of this nightmare. Today, we marvel at the continued stories about Ethan and the lives that he touched in his short 20 years. If we all lived and loved as Ethan did, the world would be a better place. Zana's mother, Karen Northington, said that she learned about the arrest after waking up and speaking with a friend. She said that it's been a horrible, horrible nightmare, this whole thing, but it's been like a weight lifted off of her shoulders. She said, quote, A lot of the grief was not knowing who this was, knowing that whoever was responsible for that is still out there. So yeah, this definitely takes a lot of grief that we were experiencing off of our shoulders. Steve Gonsalves, Kaylee's father, said that he is happy with the arrest and now they are on a path to justice. He said that when he saw the suspect's photo, what he saw was a broken soul and a pitiful human being. He said, quote, the little coward that had finally got caught running. I still think everyone's innocent until proven guilty, so I put that in the back of my mind. All four families of the victims have said that they don't know who this man is. They've never seen Brian before. However, Steve Gonsalves said that they are finding connections between Brian and Kaylee that they just are not ready to discuss yet. Their family attorney said that they're still just trying to figure things out and they will talk about all of that when they are ready. As I stated in the second video, this does sort of make sense if there are connections between the two of them because some people think that Kaylee may have been the main target based on the severity of her wounds, so that kind of pulls things together a little bit, but we don't know exactly how. Steve went on to say, this guy's gonna have to look me in the eyes multiple times and I'm going to be looking for the truth. That's really what I'm going to be looking for. So that is all of the information that we have right now, but before closing out the video, I do want to bring your attention to the fundraising efforts of the families. 
down below, I have listed three GoFundMe pages, which is all money being raised for each family. Kaylee and Madison have a combined page, and then Ethan and Zana both have their own pages. So if you do have anything to donate, I'm sure that any help that they can get can help just lift some of the tension off of the family and just make one very small aspect of this just a little bit easier. I'm sure dealing with all of this day after day is just horrible, so decreasing the financial burden that they have to deal with on top of this can make that much of a difference. Another aspect to this case is just how frustrated people were with the police and how they were handling this. A lot of people were seeing their lack of information as them not doing anything and them not knowing anything and them not making steps closer to who was responsible. I've seen so many articles that are like, why are police so bad at catching suspect these days? And, you know, here are other examples of times that police failed. And I'm like, it's only been a couple of weeks. This is a very complicated case. There is a lot to go off of. There are four people that have been murdered. There's many people that have gone through that house because of the fact that it was a party house. So that made things a lot more difficult. So I'm glad that now that we have a suspect, people are actually appreciating the police's work because I know this entire time, They've been putting forth their best efforts. I know that they haven't been the best at their press conferences. They've put a lot of information out there that they've had to walk back, and I'm sure that's very frustrating for the families. I'm sure that's something that they don't want to be saying, that they just want the concrete answers. But now that someone is arrested, I really hope that things can move forward. I hope that this is the person that really did commit this crime, and I'm sure that, you know, with his name being released and with police talking about him so much, I do think that they're pretty confident that this is their guy. But that is where I'm going to leave today's video. As soon as the arrest affidavit comes out, I will be back on here to update all of you on the investigation and how they finally arrested this disgusting predator. Again, I do know he is innocent until proven guilty, but just the fact that they released his name and his pictures, that leads me to believe that police are very confident that this is the person who committed these crimes. As with any other case, especially the very ongoing cases, I'm not going to speculate or assume anything as of right now. I only brought forward the confirmed information. If you do know anything else that has been discussed anywhere else, like in Facebook groups or any other sleuth sites that I didn't mention here, it's most likely just because I couldn't confirm certain aspects of that information in reputable sources. I know a lot of people are making connections based on him being a criminal justice student and making that study and all of that, but as of right now, that is what we know. So I'm not gonna speculate any further. And once again, the last two videos that I made, I got a lot of comments saying like, oh, you left this out, you forgot to put this, and oh, did you not know about this? Most of the things that you guys are talking about I do know about, but I'm just not including them because they're more speculative than confirmed. I'd rather make, you know, a bunch of shorter videos with confirmed information than make a really long video, you know, to get more views, making it seem like I have a lot more information than anybody else out there, but really it's just speculation. I don't want to do that. So as of right now, all of the confirmed information that we know about Brian and his arrest I have included in this video. But either way, that is where I'm going to end today's video. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and let me know down below if you like seeing these more recent cases covered on my channel, if you like seeing these multiple videos on these cases, or if you prefer longer videos on older cases, let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. And don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. Twitter is where I keep the most up to date with any case that I cover. So if you wanna be the most informed on any of these more recent cases, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter. If you have absolutely any case suggestions that you would like to see me cover on this channel, make sure you go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!